Welcome to Big Scott 35. Let's talk. Sorry if my eyes are a little red and blush. I cut grass today and allergies kicking in tonight. But uh, what I want to talk about it was uh, just retail. Uh, some people have been talking about it hard to find. It's hard to find here. I, I know I've talked about it in the past, but there is going to be a surprise ending to all of this. Uh, so... For me, I've been finding some Allen and Ginter. I've been finding a stadium club. I've been finding archives. You know, they're not really big in any year for resale. Uh, you don't see a lot of them being graded. You don't see uh, big breakers, you know. They do break them and they do, you know. Some people get them graded, the top players, but it's just the resale value is not there. Now, this being 2020, I don't know. Maybe there's a $5,000 rookie out there or something. I have no idea. I, it wouldn't put it past me. This has been very weird. I yell at YouTube a lot. And uh, just uh, the frustration. I, I don't get... I don't get the fact that a, uh, a guy that's first, second, or third year in the league going for hundreds, much less thousands of dollars when a guy's proven or Hall of Famer in the 80s or 90s and those cards are 50s, 60s, it doesn't matter. Those cards are kind of forgotten about. You know, I've, I've said it before, I made a statement, you know, <laughs> this year's rookies are going to be forgotten about next year. So you just got to wait a year. I'm collecting Pete Alonzo's, and I've been watching those prices drastically come down. Um, here, I know, I know he didn't have a great season, but he didn't have a pathetic season. Yeah. Oh my God, it was only 60 games. If you put a lot of stock, I keep saying, in this season, that's your first mistake. Uh, second, <laughs> I almost said investing in baseball cards. But I won't say that. You can do whatever you want. Um... <laughs> It's your money. You can do with it any way you want to. I watch a talk show. I, I watch a, I, I say talk show because I'm sure my age, a podcast on Saturday mornings. I don't get up early enough to watch it. I, it's a call in. I would love to call in because I wish I was up this Saturday morning because the guy was talking about that very thing. And he is a CEO of a third party, uh, fourth party card market I, I'm not going to name the guy or the company I'm not going to do that but he's basically talking about how he spends millions of dollars looking for these cards I mean but you own a company dude I mean of course you're going to say that and then he was talking about how getting graded two dollar graded cards PSA is not worthy and the whole time I'm thinking is you're in a company that has no affiliation with any sports uh, or anything you can't show logos of anything you just get contracts of people mostly ex players and cut up a jersey and put it in a card and get an autograph on it and sell it and, and it does nothing in the secondary market but yet you got to tell people that they can't get their two dollar card or they shouldn't get their they should go PSA and SG not SGC you mean say SGC you said BGS and PSA shouldn't be doing two dollar cards if you want to do two dollar cards get to a four dollar six dollar card outfit so I'm like you know Elico 3 will talk all the time about turning water into wine and that's where that is taking a two dollar card and getting it a 10 and now it's a 40 60 75 dollar card and i mean and if psa didn't want to grade those they wouldn't have a registry for those cards i, I keep going back to that it, 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 to take the registry away that that will stop all of that i i get gary carter cards graded and outside of his rookie card or some of his autographs what's the use in it i don't see getting autographs graded to me is a waste of time i do it but because they hold value in a secondary market and i don't sell a lot but i'm not an idiot either um that's like getting one-on-ones graded I, I haven't found much reasoning for that 
but people do it and i mean that's that's what they want to do and that that's where the market is right now but getting back to retail and purchasing i know i went off on a little tangent there but just a couple of things i listen to uh i i can't podcast now i'm addicted to them i can't get enough i will listen to any one of them about baseball cards but the problem is is 99 percent of them is about investing and that drives me crazy so that's why i kind of went on that sidetrack tangent and it all is going to go back to what i where i want to end this with because like i said i've been uh, the other day i spent i talked about it on some of my other uh videos but going out and I, I live in very rural Iowa there's 900 people in my town I know there's smaller towns out there and believe me there's a lot bigger towns um, so closest Walmart to me and Target is about 40 miles or 40 minutes away from me um, and probably about 35 miles as the crow flies from me but in the other direction I can hit three of them Walmarts and, tar and two Targets in about 45, well, about, about an hour probably away from me in the other direction. Now, if I go in the other two east west type deals, I could drive for days probably, not run <laughs> into one. Um, and every once in a while, I go up into Minneapolis, but you know, it, it just uh, this year is just not for me. I stayed away from crowds and everything. I did go to a a, uh, a card show um, yesterday. This being, I'm recording this Sunday the 11th. I went to this weekend in the mall near me. Uh, card show. It's, it does decent. It's been growing over the last year or two, of course, as the market has grown. And he had some new dealers or different dealers, I should say, uh, that were there. And uh, but you know, it was. It was very heavily, heavily on the graded, very heavily on basketball, very heavily overpriced. Uh, and not in the raw cards were just in boxes just thrown around. It, you know, and that's fine. And I, and I love graded. I get graded stuff. All, I got stacks of graded stuff around me now, stuff to be graded. But, uh, I still love the raw cards, and he, I wish they would take just as much uh, time and effort into doing getting those ready for the show. I just throwing them in a box, and here's your hunt. You know, I, I don't know. I just, I just won't feel in it. I'm, again, I'm frustrated. Uh, you know, and then they had, they had to go to those and see the dealers with the retail stuff two, three, four times marked up basketball football was so dramatically marked up was ridiculous and you'll see uh, over my shoulder over here a complete set that I picked up I got it at Target for $49 oh my gosh just 90 hundred bucks over a hundred bucks at that show it's just discouraging. I don't even feel like buying from those guys I just kind of walk away I mean what do you do you know and back to like the Alonzo last night this guy had a uh, Pete Alonzo purple chrome. I'm um, collecting a rainbow for 2019. Needed that one. Uh, had it 65 or best offer. And I've been watching everybody from those back pages for Ed Westergriff. They will all tell you uh, put your best offer in and see what happens. Put 45, the guy had 65. I thought 65 was a pretty low ball, low offer, a low sell price to begin with. So I put in 45 and it was free shipping. So it's going to come in plain white. So I put in 45. He countered offer to 55, told me that's my lowest offer. There is somebody else that has got the same offer in. Good luck. I didn't read that sentence by accident. I was uh, in the middle of playing video games and I sent back a counter offer of 50 and then in between games I read that and I was like ooh I made that mistake and I, over five dollars I was trying to figure out do I message him back what do I do and then I said screw it if it's not meant to be it's not meant to be as I was heading to my bed 
I get the eBay alert, and I was like, who's eBay alerting me in the middle of the night? It was him accepting my $50 offer. Uh, I guess he didn't have good luck himself. I, I don't know. And 50 might be overpriced, too. It, the market changes from minute to minute, much less day to day, whatever. So, uh, you know, I, I, shoot, I've been overpaying. If that's overpaying, then I've overpaid for some other ones. And, uh, you know, when you're going after particular stuff, sometimes you have to pay uh, the premium price, whatever that means and whatever that is to you. Um, so, and I have a, a, a threshold for what I do not go over. Pete Alonzo, second year card, he's a second year player, I mean. I'm not going over a certain threshold that I have in my mind. I'm not going over that because I don't care what the card is because he, he, he might not be that player. He's an older guy, most likely not a hall of famer. He could be a very good Met and be in the Met ring. Uh, but he's not, I, I believe he's too old to get any bigger than that. I think he's going to be a great, he could be a great all-star, be a good first baseman. Um, but I, I just don't think he's going to be that elite player. And uh, so why pay this price? And that's the problem, I think, uh, that they're having with baseball guys, the ones that are in collecting is baseball guys kind of know what they're looking at, the players. And uh, they're not going to pay that. They're just not. And uh, I, I, that's why you're getting a lot of returns on the baseball market on eBay and stuff like that because it's harder. Once you get to that upper dollar amount, it's so hard to flip it because sooner or later, you can't flip to the flippers. There's got to be a collector in there somewhere to buy it, put it in their collection to keep it. And once it gets to that threshold, they're having that problem. Seems like basketball might have hit that a little bit where now the prices are coming back down, but... It's still crazy to me when I'm watching a show about investing. Because I watch them to get ideas because I do sell and I, and I do purchase. But when you sit there and tell me that Luka Doncic has card, oh my God, it's dropped from $3,200 to $1,200. I'm still sitting here going, oh my God, $1,200? He just finished, what, a second season? And he's more expensive than Dr. J or... Larry Bird still? I'm like, holy cow, like Lou Alcinder, Kareem Abdul Jabbar to everybody else, but to his mama, Lou Alcinder, I mean, his rookie card, I was like, holy I, I was like, man, that's to me still like about eleven hundred dollars more than what it should be. I don't care what the gra the grade doesn't change what the card is. The grade just makes you know, oh, it's a very nice card. It should be. It's a second year card. It's not a 68 card. I can understand when that price goes up, but my God, <laughs> when you take a, that's a $2 card and make it into the $70 card because it's a PSA 10, but raw, it's not the same card. I, I don't get it. But anyway, what I wanted to talk about was getting back to the, it gets back to the retail. It's all out there. And, I had I had to get in the game, right? I had I've, I've been sitting here watching. I went to Target, found Allen and Ginter, and lo and behold, there was fifteen uh, uh, boxes uh, blasters of football. So I went to my LCS. It's like, hey, I just at Target. They had like fifteen blasters of of football. And he goes, I'll take those. So I went back. Of course, when I went back, there was only five left, but I bought the five. Took them back. And got this. I hope you can see it. Roberto Clemente, 1962. Now, I don't, I know y'all know I don't buy a lot. There we go. 62 and a six. So what is that? A is that an investor's grade and a six? Or is that a collector's grade because it's a 62-6? I don't know. doesn't matter to me. I got it for the card. And I got it where in a grade that I could afford. And basically, I got it. I didn't get it for free. I took those blasters, sold them to him. 
and of course he took money off of it to make this equal what I sold the blasters to to and for and then I bought some other stuff um, there but man I had to get in the game I had to do it so just to tell you yeah I don't blame anybody for doing that stuff if you go to Target and you're the first one there my targets I have yet to go want to one that has limit purchasing or made it behind the customer service. I saw uh, Eric, those last pages with one saying that there's mine hasn't, and I can't blame you for the way the way it is right now. I can't blame you for wiping it out, flipping it and making money. I, I can't blame anybody for that. So, and I had, I just wanted to let you know, I did it too. I, I've got to owe it up to it and I'm not ashamed or anything for it. I mean, I, I bought, I sold, my two trouts right after the 10 sold for 3200 and i i think i made out pretty good because i saw the guy I sold them to they were still in his case and he's not getting what he sold them to, what i bought them for so or what he sold them to me for i didn't buy them in my book but anyway until next time <laughs> see ya and then when it comes to the card game because that's what it is right now do what you gotta do flip buy you know, at least collect. And if you're going to do it, do what you love. Because if you get stuck with it, you're stuck with it. See ya.